This short video will walk you through a case study in which feature matching of communication applications is illustrated through the use of a feature matching chart to select or rule out apps. The explosion of portable media devices in many applications has created a lot of excitement in the AT, AAC, and education communities. While we're not criticizing the contributions of these new developments or the significance of having mainstream options, the extreme popularity of the platform, coupled with the impressive speed in which apps are being produced, has led many to forget or temporarily suspend well-established strategies for assessment. Our goal is to remind clinicians that our first obligation is to use a process of identifying a person's strengths and needs, both current and future, and match those strengths and needs to the most appropriate tools and strategies. This process, known as feature matching, provides a framework for clinical decision making rather than choosing tools and strategies based on media coverage, public testimony, or recommendations from well-meaning family and friends. At this point, we're assuming you've completed a comprehensive feature matching assessment and your outcomes suggest the iDevice platform is best fitted for the individual. We now want to continue to apply the feature matching process to apps. This chart, which is available for download off the website, details features believed to represent critical and fundamental considerations for a broad profile of people with complex communication needs. Along the horizontal axis, features are broken down into 11 main categories. It should be noted that features listed may not exist currently in apps. This reality highlights the importance of matching a person's need to the right tools and not trying to fit a person into the app. Additionally, the chart should be considered dynamic, changing with both apps and features. Several communication applications are listed along the vertical axis. This chart will be utilized through a case study to rule in and out apps. We will now apply the feature matching chart to rule out and select apps to a case study. In the assessment using the feature matching approach, a number of domains are considered. For example, the patient-centered domain, motor, sensory, speech, etc. The information gathered in the assessment in each domain will provide critical insight to key app features. In Nancy's case, in the patient-centered domain, we know she's 67 years of age, she's a female, and she's looking for a backup to speech when speech is fatiguing. She wants a simple voice output that has both synthesized speech and female voice. We know that she knows about high-tech technology because she lives in an assistive facility for patients with ALS, but she discussed openly that she does not want to go down that path. Cognitively wise, she is literate, has no cognitive dampening, and basic computer skills. In the sensory domain, the assessment information found was that she wears glasses for reading but has no hearing concerns. Regarding motor, she was able to direct select and she, she used a stylus for smaller icons, but she was able to use the built-in keyboard on the iPad just fine. Regarding speech, it could be characterized as breathy, soft, and trails off with longer utterances. Language-wise, she was communicating successfully to express wants, needs, questions. The main place she was having communication breakdowns was in the community with less familiar communication partners and over the phone. Per the patient's report, communication for long periods of time was fatiguing and communicating over the phone was the most difficult, yet she was not avoiding it at this point. Financial-wise, the patient reported that the f she has the funds to purchase an iPad, yet she would like to use insurance if possible. Uh, medically, she's diagnosed with bulbar ALS, which is a progressive condition. This slide illustrates information gathered in the assessment, and then we relate the information gathered to key app features. In Nancy's case, with the patient-centered domain, we found out that key app features include synthesized speech, a female voice, and that she wants voice output. Cognition-wise, key app features include a text-based system. We need a keyboard that's QWERTY. We want the app to be able to retain quote, codes like logical letter encoding or abbreviation expansion, and she's literate, so once again, a text-based app. 
Motor-wise, there are no current motor issues, yet we would like to see an app that has some dwell due to potential tremors or fatigue with her um, muscles in her hands. She used a stylus and that helped with motor selection, so maybe we would like the app to have an ability to increase the text size, especially if motor progression occurs. Language-wise, we would like an app that has the ability to customize pro vocabulary, both pre-stored and generative options. We also want enhancement features like word prediction and abbreviation expansion, and like we said before, a QWERTY keyboard. Financially, since it's an out-of-pocket purchase, she would like the lowest cost app with all the features. So now we're going to apply it to the feature matching chart and go through um, feature by feature and with the yellow arrow those are the key features for Nancy's case. So for purpose of use we're going to we are needing an app for expressive purposes. Output wise we want an app that has synthesized speech and female voice output. Speech settings, we would like it to speak after we select something, we want it to speak after a word, we would like to be able to adjust the rate of speech, and these were more options for over the phone use of an app. Representation wise, we want something with text. Display wise, once again it needs to be text, text to speech, we need a keyboard and a message window. And customization of display settings include changing the text size, possibly bigger and having a QWERTY keyboard. Feedback features weren't important in this case. She didn't need the symbols to enlarge or have an auditory click. Rate enhancement was huge in this case. Nancy wanted word prediction, abbreviation expansion, logical letter encoding, the ability to store phrases, a recently used list, all to enhance communication. Access-wise, we needed direct selection and the ability to use a pointer. Customization of access, if possible, the app would have no repeat or the ability to adjust well. We did not need to look into scanning in Nancy's case, and we weren't worried about the required motor competencies of the app. She wasn't worried about support. There's somebody on site in her facility that would be able to help her with the app if she had questions. Miscellaneous. She wanted to be able to email and use the app over the phone, um, but these, for Nancy, stated that these were not her primary concern. She just wanted a backup to speech, and that was overall um, what she was looking for. So when we apply the assessment findings to the feature matching chart, we come up with 12 key features. And in Nancy's case, these are um, an app that has synthesized speech speaking after selection, adjust the speech rate, a text-based app, an app that has a QWERTY keyboard, the ability to adjust the text size. She needed efficiency strategies like word prediction, abbreviation expansion, logical letter encoding, the ability to store phrases, a recently used list, and the ability to adjust well. So when we com now we want to compare which apps have these features and start ruling out apps. So when we look at the first app, I mean, this app gets ruled out because there's no voice output. When we look at ShapeWriter, although it's a text-based app with a QWERTY keyboard and we can store phrases and it has word prediction, there's no voice output, so the app is ruled out. When we look at Talk Assist, it has more features than the previous mentioned, yet there are no efficiency strategies, and same with Say It, so that app is ruled out as well. Speak It is a good low-cost alternative, but Nancy was willing to pay more to have efficiency strategies, so that app was ruled out. Proloquo now has word prediction, um, yet she said that the app was too expensive, and if other apps have the same things, then she would like to go with an app that was less expensive, so this was ruled out. Easy Speak was has lots of options like synthesized, it speaks after selection, a QWERTY keyboard, word prediction, the ability to store phrases, yet it was ruled out to the vo do the voices. It had British accents and Nancy didn't want that. So when we compare all the apps and we do our rule out factors, we come to the app decision of assistive chat, which has synthesized speech. We're able to speak after selection and adjust the speech rate. 
It's a text-based app with a QWERTY keyboard. It has word prediction and the ability to store phrases. And this is what the app looks like. You can see where there's the keyboard. There are four options for word prediction. In the green, it's recently used. And in the blue, it's favorites. So being able to customize recently or um, favorite phrases in the blue. So overall, we want you to feature match to identify an iDevice platform as the most appropriate and then continue to feature match to apps. We also are going to narrow down the large chart to a smaller chart based on key features of the individual and it comes out to around 10 to 15 key features and then we prioritize those features. You saw in Nancy's case, word prediction was a key feature, logical letter encoding and abbreviation expansion were also important to Nancy yet none of the apps have those options at the point of the time of the assessment. So we had to prioritize. We also begin to rule out apps based on these key features in her.